That's an unnecessarily high-pitched shriek at the end of that. Hello! Hello, Doc. Hello, Chip. Hello, Miss. How are we doing? Are we well? It is, I have been reliably informed and possibly unreliably informed. Dia de los Huertos. Day of the Dead. Mexican holiday. Uh, it's it's the Miss Plays. It is. The hot new streaming Let's Play channel. Um. <laughs> I will send you my Elgato if needs be. I don't, I don't use it. <laughs> Uh, hi. How are we doing? Are we well? Are we having a good Wednesday? <laughs> uh, right, let me do what I can to try and get the game up, because it takes a bit. Do that, then do that. Okay, it's it happened this time. Hooray! Having a long Wednesday. That's good. Unless it's unless you're not enjoying the long Wednesday, in which case that's not good. Clock's going back, messing with your head. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's happened now, and now we just gotta. We can ride it out from here. And send Miss all the pre-owned tech. Yes. Doug flexed on a child. And cheap as a drug addict. <laughs> what a lovely time the world of RPGs is. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So I might as well get in the game because nothing's happening in it. Um, <laughs> let's go to Eternal Autumn. I think that's where we are. Forever Autumn. That life will be forever awesome. Now plot's not here. Um, I don't remember it being this dark. Um, so if I had done one drug and bought one other drug. Well, you you plan on doing it again, so clear clear addiction there. Um, right, so to cut a short story that was made too long short. Um, <laughs> foreign reserve, Kira doesn't <laughs> games. Uh, we were in a spooky mansion with four siblings who were doing spooky things. We've now killed three of them. Last time we met one who was a painter who'd made a painting and then we killed him. Um, and then now, and we also killed the love interest, quote unquote, not really. Some sort of cult thing. Um, associate of the fourth sibling who we didn't know anything about, apart from the fact that they were not very nice to their own siblings, um, having ripped the jaw off one of them and tortured them. Um, but yeah, we met the associate in, in space hell and killed him. Uh, yeah, who became a magician in hell. That happened. Um, still don't really know why our character knew anything about him. <laughs> but hey, at this point, I've stopped trying to pay attention to what Patrick knows and doesn't know. Um, and then we got teleported into magical forever autumn land, which feels like levels that have just been sort of cut out of Turok or something. Um, because this is where the fourth sibling is, and she's, like, proper demon thing. Um, so that's what we're doing now. <laughs> We've killed a lot of natives, but they're fantasy natives, so they don't technically exist. I don't know. Something like that. Ow. I've done that before. Uh, how am I doing on supplies? Uh, not terribly. Uh, also, we can fly a bit. Only in magical places, though. Because games. Uh, yeah. Also, there's a white border on the screen now, and I don't know why. <laughs> that wasn't there last time, was it? <laughs> this game is a bit strange. Oh, now it's gone. There we go. Just tabbed out and tabbed back in. The treacherous money's finally let you wake up time. Hello! What is this? Oh, um... <laughs> this is Clive Parker's Undying. Um, and it's a game about ghost siblings, who most of whom we've killed now. And it was in a spooky mansion, but now we're in a dream... ruin. 
<laughs> the most interesting thing is that the main character has a terrible Irish accent and opens doors by slamming his face into them. What? Oh, hi. We have the scythe as well. This feels very Cthulhu. It's it's starting to deteriorate to the point of Call of Cthulhu. <laughs> it's this game. This game? Uh, it's also very dark. I've made it lighter in OBS. So why is it red now? <laughs> what is, what's happening with the capture of this game? Uh, random... Has that been happening before? I just not noticed that. It's weird. You have to tab out occasionally, it'd be fine. Have I always been able to cut off the heads in one? Sometimes. <laughs> it's old janky games. Oh, are there occasionally fish in pots and they attack me and bite the non existent space between my crotch? Red on the left side, yeah. Why did nobody pointed that out? <laughs> Oh well, old games, it's a thing. Uh, yeah, we, we learned how to fly in hell, so that's just a thing. What? Oh yeah, they sound like the sand people from Star Wars. Healing roots? Hi! Everyone's full of jam. Not a part of the charm. No, the technical issue. There's the fish. That is fish. Fish. Thank you. This is what people mean when they say tear down borders. I don't. I maybe. <laughs> Wanted the captain to suffer as much as we do. Yeah. I, say, I, I, I do not consider this on par with uh, Call of Cthulhu for just sheer train wreckage. Um, or Alone in the Dark 3, which may very well have uh, topped Call of Cthulhu for utter nonsense. But, uh... Oh, there we go. I remember how to do anything in this game now. Uh... That's... That attack... Like, well, I'm dead. <laughs> you die very quickly. Make a quick save here. Uh, right, so as I recall, having shield is good. Uh, these spear guns are not great, but... Oh, hang on. I was doing a, a thing, wasn't I? I was doing a shield run and slice with the scythe. That was my... That was my tactic. Probably should have done this before. Just before coming up, but... Uh, Anyway, how's everybody's day been? <laughs> Slashing with his eyes much faster. Take that fish. Screw you, fish. Alright, safe. Uh, were there any roots or whatever I missed? Healing roots. Handy, 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 handy. So yeah, th this game basically, it was a cool, fun story about four siblings in a house doing weird cult things. And it was really interesting, and I was intrigued to see where it went. And then it forgot what it was. Very good, very chill, it's just been nice. Yee! That's what we want. Oops. Well, I'm down here now. Find me. Fly over here, because we can fly. Well, I have a shield up. So much for the shield. I forgot what it was pretty quickly, yeah. Occasionally, like, came back. Makes sense. But then... Shield is terrible. There it goes. Sometimes the shield works. Sometimes it doesn't. Games! Some of them are designed. Yeah, I found it. I just found it interesting that. Oh, that was just time. I found it interesting that a game with like, written by a horror author, a famous horror author, Clive Barker. 
just completely forgot it was supposed to have a story. It, it started writing a story and then just went, eh, what if we don't? Stop. Stuck. Bloody fish. Thirty minutes of your shush. Is the game a bit too loud? My game might be a bit too loud. Um. 30 minutes of your day is involved catching a plush shark with your face that was thrown by a plant. Nice. <laughs> uh, let me... Look, look at this wonderfully intuitive UI. Okay, we have 69 health. That's worth saving. Um... It's two shields, apparently. Bet you didn't expect me to do that. Was the door? Jam. Won't budge. Oh, also we had puzzles that didn't make any sense. Um, well, they did make sense, but they used mechanics that were not ever explained or introduced. It's not gonna open. Hi. <laughs> I thought there was a roof here. made this building it has no doors <laughs> <clears throat> to be fair you might have written a story and then the game designers botched it maybe maybe L like i say like the setup to this story was actually really interesting we've, we've talked a little bit about like some cool ideas of ways you could have taken the story and a fool's au maybe coming in the future Oops. well oh, oh, oh just about just about <laughs> uh The door, the door is open elsewhere. That's the ladder. Like, there's some cool environments and stuff, none of which really served to do anything. Um, that was jammed. What do I do now? <laughs> uh... Been in that building. There's only three buildings, and I've been in them all. I guess that one. <laughs> Absolutely not. a cool ending sequence if we hadn't already gone to hell twice. Yeah, we went to hell before we met the characters. Like, I think we met one and a bit siblings of the four siblings. Not including the one who's who was nice. Um, yeah, we, we met basically none of the important characters before going to hell. <laughs> now I'm stuck in a hole. I could see the sky through the window. Uh. Won't budge. So I gotta find a lever, I guess. Hurry up! I'm trying. I'm trying. Please. Have patience. I guess I haven't been in this building because it's just got a roof on it. So. Through the window, maybe. I guess. Gonna get in there. Hi, I'm Ed Winchester. It's been. Also, everything's way too dark. Oh, there 
close the door. Oh, there's that door. It's <laughs> scared you. You're awake, Amos. Be awake. Very important things are happening. Um, like uh, uh, with 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 the thing. Doors open. What a puzzle. Occasionally drums happen. Loading. Okay, I'll save after the loading. Oh, I hate these guys. Got it. More. Is there another one. Ow! 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 What is? What is how? What with how? I've killed the. I've killed them. They killed me. Just as a reminder, you cannot load during death animation. Or skip them. This big gun seems bad. It is, basically, but it's the only thing you get ammo for here, so... The one saving grace is that if you're outside, you can imbue the spears with lightning, and then the thing you hit gets struck by lightning. It only works outside, though, and you can't use the lightning spell normally while you have the gun. That's fun. Okay, right. Run! <laughs> I like it! Hi there. It's Abe again. Nope, oh, a little confused. Also doesn't exist. That's fine. I'm fine with that. That's good. Um. Well, there's a river. Before we do that, any secrets? No. Nope. A perfectly spaced series of rocks. <laughs> Good with a headshot, though. Turns out. This soundtrack's not gonna get annoying. Um, oh God, I walked into the thing. Uh, did you think about this game the other day? Watching through all of Hellraiser at the moment. So you're peacefully lurking around. Nice. They made a new Hellraiser film recently, didn't they? Also, hi. Um. I understand Hellraiser is uh, received slightly better than the story of this game. <laughs> like the noise of the spear gun. Yeah, it goes thump, like a tennis match. Good. Um, why do they have a Molotov cocktail or whatever? Not, not gonna ask questions. It's an old game. <laughs> Don't ask questions about old games. Sounds like you're saying, where are my keys? Uh, 
Uh, dude's words lost a moment when the trans woman was cast in the movie. Uh. Hello! Oh god, not hello. Where are my keys? Hang on, these guys are really magic, aren't they? <clears throat> I think we learned this last time. Well, they're also good with magic, which is annoying. <laughs> and I'm bad at games. So yes, hello, new friend. Welcome to uh, the stream where I am bad at games. That is not... Oh, no. Can you select this? Thank you. To be fair, though, the game is also bad at games. So... Welcome back to somebody for trying to find their keys. I think you could fire that far. No, keep that. Twang, 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 twang. <laughs> it's been a it's been a theme, a running theme for this spooky season. That uh, <laughs> overtly repetitive background music. Um, yeah, the Hall of the Ethan costume. It's cool. A little bandage on the hand. Worryingly realistic. <laughs> Kira was best fungusman. Okay, you can't hit them even without a green red kill, that's good. Doesn't do a lot of damage though. Okay. Interesting, how about if we only do it on green? No, these ones just take more damage than the ones in the cave, okay. Twice as much, great, cool, lovely. Um <laughs> I'm trying to be more, like, energetic and positive in this stream, because the last stream was just a bit of a downer. And this game started off so well! Oh, I'm so excited. It's fine. It's fine. Not all games can be Nosferatu. Neat. So it'd be comfy and warm while faking a few missing things. Yeah. It'd be comfy and warm. Can somebody find this person their keys? loading zone. <laughs> no philosophy. It was just like nothing happened in it. <laughs> like some some relatively important story things happened, but nothing happened. <laughs> oh, come, oh come on. Like, what am I supposed to do about this effect? <laughs> up here help help the thing <laughs> I believe this was the good one yeah I was told that this was better than Jericho Oops. good for one is forearmed who lied to me the internet I was reliably informed that the internet would never lie to me. This is a travesty. In healing roots, that's good. I'm gonna have to use them. Uh, is there another one? There's another one there. Hi. Of course, we can pick up and throw skulls. Doors open. You're not dead, though. No. You you did leave. That's good. Uh, hi! How's it going? The 
The skulls like to laugh. <laughs> They're having a great time. What? They're still here. Well, why are they still here? I've killed the things that spawn you. It's just a constant hazard, I guess. Oop, frame rate. Frame rate does not like this. Oop, but look there, it's fine. <laughs> If only we could just tell these programs, you know, it's fine, you can use more than 12 megabytes of RAM. I'll let you. It's okay. <laughs> Abe's with their sticks. Yeah, it's Madokans. Lots of jam! Mm -mm -mm. Many sandwiches were made here. Hi! Ow! Ow! Oh, okay, I have a shotgun for some reason. <laughs> well, that was unsuccessful. Um... Guys are really tricky because they teleport behind you with a stick and then hit you with a stick and then take a while to work out the AI pathing so that they can stab you with a stick. I can't do anything until you do your animation. <laughs> come on! <laughs> no, back here, back here, come to, to behind me. Oh, you can do it from the front, that's fine, that works. There we go. Well, kind of, sort of works. <laughs> and I can look. <clears throat> Um, I have a theory. A fool making a try. Before making? Is that like before mentioned? Hi, bye. Hi, bye. Nope, that's going to be locked until you die, isn't it? Right. Excuse me. <laughs> I know what you meant, I just wonder what Hazel meant. Okay, well, that didn't go too badly, because they were very confused, so what- <laughs> Oh god! It was going well. It has never automatically equipped a weapon when I run out of ammo before. Today it just decided, hey, why don't we, why don't we do that? Seems fun. These, I hate these. Did I go by game journalist ratings for the two games or real people? But reviews and things like that, people say, oh, this is the good one. But then again, Call of Cthulhu was somebody's favorite game, so. <laughs> I don't want to complain. I don't like complaining about games. I want to talk about the good things, and this has really cool ideas in it. I like having fun with games. Stop teleporting behind me. I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> Just gonna load. Um, so, running past me didn't work, so we have to do something else. That's how games work. Such great idea. I know, it's cool. Potential. <clears throat> I'll take a game with untapped potential over a boringly competent game. So I really like something that is competent and has potential. <laughs> How? 
Well, at least you did it quickly. Obsessing over Aaron's hold. Aaron could have been a really cool character. I, that was the character I remember seeing in previews and going, ooh, I wonder what their deal is. Turns out, not a lot. <laughs> um, How do you effectively deal with these? You can't hit them when they're invisible. Also, there's now like a flashing white border. <laughs> I don't know anymore. <laughs> Aaron was like, hey, I was, was Dimitrescu not particularly interesting in the game. That's a shame. Um, I have okay. I haven't tried the Phoenix yet. Should we try the Phoenix? Can't reload it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay, so it's just, oh, it's just a bomb, I guess, but not a very good one. <clears throat> really, rather bad. Okay, let's load. <laughs> She's the first boss. Okay, I wouldn't have expected that. Oh, we have a zoom. I didn't know we had a zoom. Um, <clears throat> not that it would have been useful at any point. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Red line's back. Oh, it looks pink. And blue is, is all sorts of colors. Oh, it's a multicolored line. Exciting time. Okay, okay. This is something. I'm technically slowed you down. Even when you're invisible, I can do that. I'm not going to cause any damage, but it does slow you down enough for me to be able to turn around and hit you. Okay. That works. That worked. Put up a shield. Oh, was it the shield that did it? Oh, yeah. How weird. Well, now you know what spell I'm using, I guess. <laughs> right, I would really rather only one of you were in here, but that's not going to happen, is it? Ow. Stop it. I have a shield. One at a time, please. Only one disaster of game design at a time. I'm really wondering what the intended method of dispatching these guys is. Oh, I'm dead again. I thought I had something. Turns out it only works against one of them. They just decided they didn't want to do the teleporting thing this time. Okay, fine. Bit of a flickering border on the go, yeah. Um, okay, can I... This is, this is delicate work. Um... Oh god, I broke everything. <laughs> Help! I'm bad! Right. Might have... I've done something. Mortis. Mortis. Oh yeah, they released uh, the, the whole triple thing for that, didn't they? Panic! Always panic. Okay, I think I've cropped <laughs> the game capture, which I will forget for the next game, but I've, I've cropped the game capture to uh, block that out. So, it should be good. That panic. Then music happened. Uh -huh. Yep. Then. 
but not really have an effective way of dealing with you. Do you like Molotovs? Also, our character can just sort of light things on fire with his fingers, and there's been no explanation for that at all. They didn't understand the concept of range! All of Faith is a good spooky, yeah. I remember, I've seen the first part. There was a big thing when it first came out. Um, I haven't seen any of the other. He gained magical powers when he got the rock around his neck. Because of course. And yet we, we had to solve certain puzzles involving setting things on fire. And we didn't just do that with our fingers. <laughs> I had to use a Molotov cocktail <laughs> in hell. <laughs> Hello, lovely wreath. What? Nothing? Patrick, I'm disappointed in you. Nobody said Patrick was smart. No, I, certainly nobody argued against it. <gasps> Therein lies the discrepancy. Gotcha. Skulls are good. <clears throat> like the skulls. Skulls are fun. This is just a little village. <laughs> Kindly little village in the middle of forever autumn. <laughs> Do, 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 Okay. Right here. Ah! Healing roots. A lot of healing roots. Boss arena, maybe? Oh, there's a path. There was a path. I missed the path. <laughs> Before I go there, let's grab all the... Oh, no, we have to go... There's a loading screen now. Cutscene! Story, maybe. Kind of. coming. Eternal and undying, he will resume his reign. Ah, and his Hi. mistress, the now and future queen. Soon we will embrace and preside over the new dominion. I got the voice kind of right. <laughs> Your king is a parasite, Bethany. I'll make sure know. you infect this family no more, and that <laughs> your mighty king will feed the worms. <laughs> Impudence. You struggle against the ocean and don't even realize it. That All accent. the power I acquired in this world pales to that which he possesses. His throne will be built on the bones of humanity. I promise you that'll not happen. It's time to steal your tongue. No, it is time for you to realize who you are fighting. Want a throat lozenge? Wibbly wobbly. Polygons. It's the funky new dance. Who's a monster now? Snake? I was... I was expecting to... For the consequence of all of this to... Make sense. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like something would come out. Or there'll be wings or something, but it's just she just grew a growth. I guess it's a weak spot, maybe. Okay, got a load of these. Ooh, just respawn.
Come here, Skyfish. Fight down here. Apparently, that's fine. Entrance to this fight, you just need to chop off her head. Okay. I would have, I would have assumed I would have to kill the other two first. But... Thank you for the shortcut. <laughs> Twitch was so pulled by this that it crashed. I don't know. She became fungus. Like possibly they were doing a kind of power up thing, weren't they? Oops. Yeah, now. Battle down again. Hello. My name is Crispy Pastors, and I am a professional badass gamer. Well, it's all nice and calm now. Hang on a minute. Oh, no. They learned how to travel. Gonna add it to Twitch by what bad at game. <laughs> oh, good. Now, now these guys are here. Okay, love that. On the plus side, relatively easy to take care of. I thought I killed you. Okay, no, you killed me. <clears throat> Try to smoke yourself out of the room with a candle. No, don't do that. Needs to get a wick trimmer. Wick disagrees. Unless that unless that's a euphemism for a knife. Oh god, I was, I was having a drink. Oh. Yeah, right. Bad again. No drink only game. my torso. Quote commander is a thing, yes. Friends can add quotes and you can regurgitate quotes on command. Probably not the word. I'm supposed to be holding skulls at this point, but I guess not. Right. 
Hi, what? <laughs> I cut off a head from behind through a sack. Oh, it's the stones. They finally do something. What have I done? I don't know. <laughs> I have literally no idea. Oh, it's you again. You're not a sibling, go away. I forgot you existed. We slapped you. Hey, we're back. Uh, is that our friend? What was his name? Jeremiah? Jeremiah well, Fink? Well, it looks like you've succeeded. You are full of surprises, Patrick. You've apparently learned to harness that stone's power quite effectively. Slain my entire family. Done what I could not. You even bested Kysinger. There must be some vengeful satisfaction there, eh? What is this vile lie? What's this? This is fate, old friend. I've spent the last 20 years fearing this moment, hoping to figure a way out of this curse. All I need is that stone you carry to end my misery. But I saw you die. You saw what you wanted to see. An old friend hacked down by his black sheep of a brother, <laughs> yet slain by a weapon powerless to our curse. Of all people, Patrick, you should know the sole purpose of the scythe. I wish I could have planned on the hot-headedness of Ambrose, <laughs> but I couldn't have created a better ruse for myself. No way did you suspect me. You thought my siblings killed me, and your blind rage did the rest. <laughs> oh well, it matters little now. You've completed the work I could not. Monolog. You were my friend. Why are you doing this? Oh yes, I guess we were friends once. But on that faraway continent, I felt the inevitable calling of my brothers and sisters. I was drawn back to this land, to the death that stirs beneath us. I died the day I saved you on that battlefield, seared by that blast from the Shaman Stone. However, I awoke from my death with lifeless eyes, enslaved to do the bidding of the king. <laughs> I could no longer deny what was in me, but you unwittingly held the key. You can't think I'll let you get away with this, Jeremiah. You should be grateful I'm killing you. You won't like the world I've planned. Once I have the stone <laughs> and drain the power of this old king beneath our feet, I'll show the world the true meaning of reality. You know what, Jeremiah? You talk too much. No simple. <laughs> you fell right into my trap, Patrick Galloway. Pretty much. Hazel, you have a long, illustrious voice acting career ahead of you, it turns out. <gasps> the stones! They wimble. They wobble, but they don't fall down. You're disappointed in this like you were expecting it, but still disappointed. I'm not angry at you, Jeremiah. Just disappointed. Oh, where, where'd you go? Oh, there you went. You're a kaiju now, Jeremiah. <laughs> so I hear you're a kaiju now. Oh. We're an ant kaiju. Uh, not what I wanted to do. Thank you. Oh, dear. Now I don't know where I am because it turned me around. Blow up your head. Oh, God. I died. Uh, is there anything else around? Dynamite. Okay, okay. 
That's probably what he's doing there. Uh, oh god. Do I really have to navigate the inventory in the final boss? Is that a thing? Okay, maybe, maybe. I can destroy some of the lower limbs, possibly. What did you miss? Uh, we fought the fourth sibling who turned into like a... Oh, I don't want to say sack witch, but the, they're the words that are coming to mind. I'm dead again. Um, <laughs> it's the drawing was immersive. He. We thought Beth... Bethany! Uh, and then it turns out that the brother that we came here to look after was actually the evil guy all along. Now I went too close to a tentacle. Yeah, and then Jeremiah betrayed us and now he's a kaiju. Hmm. Sackwitch. Yeah, if I hold down the button game, I would like you to do the thing that happens when I hold down the button. General rule of thumb, make sure that the player can do controls. Hot tip for game designers out there. When the player presses a control, make sure that the thing happens, that the control... <laughs> we don't have the scythe out, which is probably not a good idea. Um, reaching. I was rather hoping haste would stop that. Um, I need to aim at his head after I've destroyed the four legs. Am I destroying the four legs? <laughs> it didn't look like I destroyed anything, but. Dang. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I am actually. Well, <laughs> the game suddenly changed my view and then aimed me at the floor. Quick save that, so I don't have to keep swapping for the skulls. <laughs> stop doing that! I can't stop you doing that. I 
think I just found a sweet spot, maybe? than Mother Hydra. I mean, it hasn't glitched, so that's, that's something. Oh, I say it hasn't glitched. <laughs> it won't open. They just didn't scare us. When did you call your internet provider this week? Is Twitch being a, being a funny thing? It's sucking me in, but the thing isn't open for me to stop it sucking me in. Is there something I'm meant to do? This is not a bad time to save. Out on Twitch. I don't know. It's Hellraiser, so but it's, it's Clive Barker of Hellraiser fame. So I feel like nobody should be surprised necessarily. Do I have to do anything else, or is it just more of this? <laughs> Skulls came in useful. I'm glad I upgraded these. This is, these are fully upgraded skulls, I should call them. Fully amplified, I should say. And the pattern repeats until one of you is dead. Okay. <laughs> Any fun plans for the rest of the week? <laughs> this is the end, right? I mean, it might take another hour. <laughs> agree <laughs> that I just need to keep doing this for as long as I have been doing <laughs>
game feels like it should have been over two streams ago. It kind of was. Oh. I'm wondering if I still have to hurt the two remaining left at the bottom. Oh. What was that it? No? Fargo didn't write this, did he? <laughs> then the fight carries on for two hours. <laughs> I need to keep hitting. Okay. It really felt like I should have stopped hitting the head. <laughs> I think you, you said after destroying the four arms, and I feel like I've only killed two of the four arms. That these, these two are still flapping around, you know? So I was wondering whether or not that's a thing. It is two. Okay, okay. okay. Got the mini Grim Hollow session from Jib. Nice. Oh. Seriously? <laughs> well? This is the first time I've ever had somebody tell me something from a walkthrough and been surprised that I was right. <laughs> oh, Hello, Ferryman. Where am I? Good question. Yo, it can't be. I'm not done with you yet. <laughs> There's no way of telling where that Gilzabar stone disappeared to. Into a bottomless ocean, or an eerie <laughs> phantasm of sorts. I drifted out to sea. It took months to finally get my strength back. I think I finally have some idea of what went on. The beast I slayed manipulated the Covenant family the same way Jeremiah did to me. It called for him, and he called for me. The creature was a guardian, a sentinel of a gate to somewhere. Some when. The Celtic warrior was just a sacrificial lid on a tomb that was never supposed to be opened. Oh sure, I've tried to convince myself that it's all over now. The terror. The battles. I've got to get away and rest, where no one will find me. You see, I looked into the Brotherhood of St. George, and I found other monasteries scattered all over the world. And other gates, too. Watched by other guards, no doubt. About the only thing I fear anymore is that they'll call on me. Again. Don't worry, your fears are allayed. They never made a sequel. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I'll do the credits manually then. <laughs> Fine game. <laughs> oh, they don't even scroll. Okay. Well. <laughs> Animation. Engineering. Jost. Furt. Um... Who did the story? Uh, well, presumably, Clive Barker. <laughs> I, I feel like that what he just said, well, the second half made a bit more sense, but the first half of that spiel was a series of beginnings of sentences that didn't end. <laughs> you know what I mean? Additional. The test. Sorry, Jost. CQC. <laughs> Um, to be fair, if I'm, if I'm to look at this, doesn't look like there's anybody down for writing, so maybe no one, <laughs> maybe this story just arrived, <laughs> nobody except Clive Barker, apparently, yeah Clive Barker's not here, it's just in the title of the game.
So much Jost. Many Josts. Nobody wrote this game. <laughs> Um, Caleb Sweezy, though. Good old Caleb Sweezy. The head jost. <laughs> they made the game, but nobody wrote it. Again, like uh, my, my estimation is that this game was written by Clive Barker in the same way that Elden Ring was written by George R. R. Martin. <laughs> that, that's my standpoint for this. A few ideas were thrown their way and they were just sort of expected to deal with it. Unfortunately, this team didn't know how to put the ideas together. Um... <laughs> oh, Veer is doomed. No, we've got we've got way too many people writing Veer. It's fine. We've got a different problem. <laughs> I'm glad you put in more effort for your games. Yeah, so if you, if you actually wrote something, then you have exceeded <laughs> this game. <laughs> I don't want to be too down on this. Like, again... This is one of those games where, like, the first half of it... It's, well, not really first half, like... There's half of a game in here, which is really, really cool and interesting. And then the other half is... Uh, we had we had some maps for when we were messing around with, like, Space Hell and Turok, and... We wanted to try and cement it together. Falls A you went. We've got 45 minutes. I mean, now? <laughs> yeah, same hat. <laughs> yeah, it feels way too padded. It's like, you had the material, though. It's all there. It, it, it feels simultaneously too padded and too rushed. It's very peculiar. Um, music was quite good. Uh, the idea was neat. The designs, the like the environment designs outside of Turok and Space Hell. Like, the actual mansion itself felt pretty cool. Um, those were shorter and more focused, it would have been better. Yeah, a bit, bit more focus on, like, developing the ideas for the characters and turning them into levels rather than just shoehorning in whatever they shoehorned in. We will be the writers of the game, yes. <laughs> mod you in. I might be able to mod. I've, I've unpacked all of the files for this game. I don't know if I can repack them. Um... So we, I, I can certainly, like, <clears throat> I've gotten all of the audio files out. There might be a way to put them back in. <laughs> so we can just redo all the dialogue, at least. Uh, well, okay, let's try and transfer over to something else in a dignified manner. Um, why is Dropbox open? Go away. I'm throttling my bandwidth. Leave me. Leave, leave me be. Um, right, okay. Um, I now need to rearrange everything so that <laughs> we can get stuff going. Uh, mind you, Crop to Capture, thank you very much. Yes. Oh, well, you don't want to see that, do you? Um, there to do with things. There's a game, wherever it is. It's vanished. There it is. Uh, transform. Reset transform. There we go. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, all right, okay, so let's get talking. Um, I guess we'll get up Clip Studio. And get my drawing glove, which is currently inside out from drying from being washed. Uh -huh. Uh, keep more consistent with the theme of the enemies, because that was all over the place, yeah. Uh, one of my major issues with it was that this game went, like, from naught to Cthulhu in ten minutes. Like, <laughs> it had it, no concept of pacing. Um, and I, again, this is an old game, but, like, we we play old games all the time. Like, I feel I feel like better than this existed. <laughs> Family of Ghost Monsters with different abilities and stories unfold as another better game in itself. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was. That was the hook that made me want to play this game. You know, warm drawing glove. Now he's been drawing for a while. Um, it was only two thousand one. Yeah, lots of games came out in two thousand one. Can you hijack the stream? Sure, if anyone wants to chat. Uh, let me get things up. Uh, 
Oh, should we do this? In, should we? Uh, shall we do this in Aggie? If we want to do this together, I don't know. <laughs> I just feel mutiny like that. Uh, okay, random, random Aggie stream. <laughs> I do have uh, Hitman installed, but we're going to be playing the second Hitman game next. But I feel like this is... We, we might as well do this while it's fresh. Um... <laughs> we fixed this now! Hijack in the stream. Uh, this should be fine if I just do that. Maybe. Oh, I have Discord muted. That's yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm hijacking your stream. <laughs> ah, the chip. Yeah, I'm here. I'm hijacking uh, your stream to write a better story. We can write a better story. Let's do. Uh, yeah. Anyone else want to hop into Aggie? I can put the. Link in actually, let's put it in both discords, I guess. Uh, I've forgotten the name of the game already. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Clive Barker's Patrick Galloway. <laughs> but that's good because the one word I remembered was undying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I paid enough attention to do draws. That's right, come draw, draw spooks. This is suddenly a group drawing stream. Not if you want it, like game name, I keep forgetting it too. Yeah, the f first thing we're going to rewrite is the name of the game. <laughs> um, do away with Clive Barker's. Clive Barker didn't write this. <laughs> Clearly, uh, we won't have things. We won't have. People on stream because I'd, I'd have to close Discord and open it in the. App. Oh, that's fine. I'm bad. Um, yes, because I do think it has potential. We just need to cut out like sixty percent of the game. <laughs> uh, oh, also, I've got a ton of Windows ink. <laughs> Sorry, turn on Windows. It's, it's, this is the stuff I have to do to set up for a drawing stream. It's a pain. <laughs> Anyway, miss, you should stream, it's fun. Um, right. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, so I think we have the four siblings. I mean, technically five, including Jeremiah. But... <laughs> um, You're that guy. Jeremiah can stay dead, honestly. <laughs> I'm fine with Jeremiah yeah, I, staying I'm... dead. Yeah, I think that's it adds a bit of stakes to it. I I didn't think it really added anything. Other than like, oh Jeremiah's betrayed you. How sad for this man you <laughs> didn't really know anyway because you talked to him like maybe twice. Yeah, if he had more involvement with the story, it might have actually meant something at the end. Yeah. Like it's like the freaking Dead Island thing of like girl's daughter dying and like who are you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We arrive, there's an emotional scene between two people we've never met, with one of them dying, like, in, in amongst yeah. the hundreds of other people that have died. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jeremiah should have got his head cut off, like, I don't know, after the second sibling. Yeah. yeah. Didn't that happen? I mean, the, the second sibling did it, originally, but then oh, he right. came yeah, back. Yeah, we were like, and... after the second sibling got right. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So okay, like, four he gets endangered a couple of times through the story, so there's actually like some stakes and stuff, and then he gets done. And you're like, ah, revenge, and then yeah. he turns out he's not dead. Because the story isn't really good at setting up stakes, because you arrive there, there's like a murder, and then you just go to sleep. <laughs> like that happens. Yeah, that is a bit weird. <laughs> there are monsters here. They're ransacking the mansion. Anyway, have a nice sleep. Good night. Good night. <laughs> See you in the morning. Yeah, you you fight a bunch of monsters and then it's just yep, sleep and they're like what? Were you not worried about no, okay. Well Um So yeah, I'm totally fine with Jeremiah actually dying. Like he calls you here for a threat, you're shown the threat, 
you figure out that the siblings, he dies, and then you fight the rest of his siblings. <laughs> there's five of there's four siblings. Uh, Jeremiah can fit right in between. <laughs> it fits perfectly. <laughs> Windows Inc. Stop it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I I liked a little bit of backstory that we got of like these five siblings did some like kind of weird ritual when they were children because they were kids and they were like let's do this this sound seems like fun and then they accidentally summoned a demon or whatever. Um, that sounds uh, like a very kid thing to do. Yeah, you know, just... you're messing around with things, not really thinking it's anything's yeah, going to yeah. happen, and then it actually rich happens. Kid stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They they are rich kids who live in a mansion, and their mom died. So you know, and their dad is like awful. So they're gonna have some issues. Uh, um, and then like they kind of like have this thing where like when they die, they kind of become these like weird creatures or vampires or whatever, depending on like what they were like. Or yeah, something, or how <clears throat> so, something. Take take a a thing about their personality and their sort of traits as children, and then exacerbate it into a monsterly thing. Exactly, which is why yeah. the feral child with mommy issues <laughs> becomes a werewolf. <laughs> it sounds like Narnia. <laughs> Did the kids yeah, in Narnia do a ritual? Memories of Narnia. <laughs> I don't remember yeah. a pentagram by uh, the water. What, what do we have? We had werewolf. We had a. Witch, yeah, demon witch. Yeah, Bethany so... was a witch, kind of. Aaron was. I think he should just be a ghost and not yeah, ghost. whatever weird monstrosity he was in the thing. Yeah, Go I'm going like ghost, maybe with like illusions, would be a cool idea. Yeah. He's a painter, sort of creating, mm -hmm. sort of fabricating visions and things like that. That might be an interesting thing. Maybe, maybe just entirely incorporeal until you find the actual physical body, which is basically what happened, but yeah, with more yeah. shenanigans. Aaron is the ghost, Bethany is the witch, uh, Lisbeth is the werewolf, and um, it also I began keep with A. That's all him I remember. Conan, that's not his name. <laughs> <laughs> it began with A because I remember it being Aaron and another one beginning with A. It's... Alexander? No. What, what, uh... What's the fourth one? It, it's Conan the Barbarian. But I don't know what his name is. Um... I'm trying to... Hold on. I, I'm googling it. Um, It's... Where are you? I'm sticking with Burn. Ambrose. That's it. That's why I cannot remember it. That that's just Aaron something works. he's that's just something he says about Aaron. <laughs> Ambrose. <laughs> lion, the witch, and the portal to hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, was there a lion? Maybe. Well, there, there was a dog that ran in and <laughs> grabbed Conan's arm. What what was that all about? <laughs> Remember um, that in the boss fight? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Honestly. We needed a way to incapacitate Axeman, so let's just have a dog run in. <laughs> yeah, I think that was it. I don't think it was like mentioned or anything. Oh, he was the pirate. Okay. Yeah, he was the pirate. Looked in the portrait like a vampire, and then became like um, Conan the Barbarian pirate. Yeah, he, he just hulked out. Um. Yeah. Why is he a pirate? We just get rid of the pirate theme. That, that, we that we're does... getting rid of the pirates, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's very hard I to mean, write Nagi. Like... There's some sort of stabilization thing going on. Because there is, like... You know, because they're... What they did is get... They're all kind of, like, attracted to the occult, I think. Um, so... Oh, Ambrose was, was voiced like, by Clive Barker. I forgot about that. 
mentions that Ambrose, Conan, Bronan got like involved with these quote unquote pirates because essentially cult. Um so I think he could be like get involved with culty stuff. <clears throat> I like the idea that it's not be pirates. <laughs> you know I like the I like the idea that it's it like maybe sort of this was the the sibling that got into crime in some yeah, capacity. Yeah, exactly. Like, very, like, actual crime cults, <laughs> actively. I mean, yeah. with the name, like, Ambrose, he could have been, like, the alchemist sort of thing. Like, the one that does all the sciencey crazy stuff with the group. Like, Frankenstein sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. I... I mean, then I there'll think... be a reason for him to suddenly turn into the Hulk. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think Bethany is more of the um, science, quote unquote scientist, even though she is the witch. Oh, um, Bethany's the witch. She witch do that. Because <laughs> she's the one that keeps, like, you know, experimenting on people and, you know, murders her brother. By feeding him to the rats. <laughs> um. Also, oh, she, yeah, we could do a kind of like, sort of like Dark was alluding to, sort of Jekyll and Hyde sort of thing, where she takes a potion and that's the fight. Is that this weird magical homunculus form that you find? That could be interesting. And and like maybe like some of the things, some of the monsters in the house were actually like things she made and have been trying to sort of keep in the dungeon or whatever but they broke out yeah. once she died slash well died quote unquote yeah um yeah i think conan ambrose should be an actual criminal kind of thing <laughs> what did bronan do in the game good question uh um, he, he was friends he with pirates his father. <laughs> he did that with paul q yeah I think that's it. <laughs> Which, I love. Murders... I love that we got that out of order. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. The first thing we learned about that was, oh, it was the dad that Ambrose killed, and we we're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and <Okay>. what? <laughs> and then later on, it was like, we heard Ambrose killing somebody. Who could it be? Yeah, but I mean, it's like he killed his father. That's one thing we know, and that he basically got involved with a cult of pirates. That sounds like he joined the gang. <laughs> you know? <laughs> he murdered someone, he joined the gang, he started murdering mortals. It's just not a pirate gang, because that's stupid. <laughs> yeah, like an actual criminal sort of gang. Or, or maybe it's like, he could also be like a murderer sort of thing, so that fits yeah. in with the... Because it's also like... family. Everyone is like scared of Ambrose and when he's gonna show up again and do stuff and stuff and all that so seems to fit that he'd be like you know actual criminal <laughs> I don't know why I'm sort of thinking of the time period and I might be off a bit <laughs> um, in fact I am definitely off a bit because this was after the first world war wasn't it um, yes. Yes. Yeah, it's... So it's just goofy gothic mansion it sort of made me the time period, particularly like with bits of Tudor architecture and all that sort of stuff, just made me think of like, how would you fit crime into this? And my first thought was like, sort of visual, visually interesting horror adjacent sort of crime would be something like sort of, uh, what's the word? High women sort of thing. Nice tricorn holding up carriages and stuff. And you can make that spooky because that happens in woods and is dark. And I don't know. I feel like that'd be an interesting. Look, I don't, I don't, would very much be uh, <laughs> distancing ourselves from the uh, barbarian side of things. <laughs> That's with that. not that thing. The, the barbarian was essentially not based on nothing. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And, and you could make an actual like challenging fight, like him running around with pistols and stuff. Mm-hmm. Kind of like an ocelot fight, actually. That that would be interesting. Yeah, you're like, running through the mansion. Like, he's... I know, shooting out <laughs> lights or knocking over things, and you have to deal with darkness. And... Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking of <laughs> for some reason. If you want, to, if you want a, a, an appropriate video game comparison, consider Rayman Three. Um... <clears throat> uh huh. 
There's a part in Rayman 3, you're in a mansion, there's a guy with a gun shoot, running around, shooting you from weird places, and you've got to avoid all the shots and there's little sort of mini games. It kind of works. You can make that spooky. Mm -hmm. Wait, what? Why is that not in Rayman 3? <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a kind of old-timey hunter with a big blunderbuss sort of thing. Okay. It's Count Razov, if I remember okay. correctly. Um, it's a weird section. <laughs> See, I'm thinking you could probably replace the big axe fight, um, which you would have with Conan. Ronan Ambrose, um, with like Bethany and Hulk form. <laughs> yeah, I think that'd be more appropriate. Because Bethany gave up. It, it very much feels like Beth. I mean, Bethany should still be like the uh, final fight before you know you fight whatever monster they. Summoned when there were children, basically. Yeah. Um, because I think that'd be cool. Um, but yeah, because she has some witchy kind of things going on, but also like she is just very cruel, and I feel like that <clears throat> would be fun to explore in like you know actual physical fight where she just goes after you. <laughs> yeah, so maybe you can have like a sort of phase different like a couple of different phases in the fight of like the first is this sort of just very vicious sort of mad scientist basically <laughs> sort of thing, but yeah. witchified. Yeah. Um and then eventually that doesn't work, so I will become the experiment jabs things into arm, becomes Hulk Witch. <laughs> I mean, just just the phrase Hulk Witch is enough. Like that's the starting point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I I like the phrase Hulk Witch. Um, I did yeah. w one small thing that I did remember from the game is there are bits of the game where you just walk into a room and then things float and attack you. Yeah, and I always I thought that was Bethany, but I'm not sure it was. I think it. <laughs> I think it might be Aaron just because he's a ghost, but... Maybe, but it also happened while he was chasing me. So he, he was elsewhere. <laughs> so it was like I run straight past him and then I end up in a room and then things fly around. And I don't know, maybe that's just the game being weird, but... Yeah, I, I think it might be like, oh, you've seen a ghost, now spooky things are happening and things get yeeted at you kind of thing. Because I, I, I like the, uh, what I thought the game was going to do, which I thought was kind of interesting, <clears throat> was there would be a sibling that was part of this pact and just sort of died or got killed or whatever, and you just sort of never see them through the game. They just, they just exist as this sort of un, uh, uh, restless spirit that's just mm. sort of making life annoying, and you, you never actually see them as a character. You only see them in paintings. Um, and then the end of the game happened. Um <laughs> Mm -hmm. But I don't think we can fill him with, him with what we've got at the moment. Um, no. Which is a shame. Maybe. Maybe Jeremiah could become the restless spirit. Oh, yeah. Happy. After fun. he gets killed. Um, maybe there's like a, a point in the middle where we're like, Jeremiah's like, actually, no, we, we just don't, don't go any further. Things are getting worse. Just leave. And we're like, we're not going to leave. We're the protagonist. We're going to do things. So on and so forth. Maybe, maybe that's at the point where he's. You know, he gets his head cut off. Um, and so he sort of dies with this feeling of, like, just just got to get out. You get out. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so that's why he's throwing things at you. It's <laughs> literally, get out of the house. Just save yourself. Leave. Yeah. Also makes sense because, like, everyone else turned after that in, like, something weird or another. Um, so it would also happen to Jeremiah, but Jeremiah is just not evil in this version. <laughs> it's very hard to write in Aggie. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, 
Yeah, I like I said yesterday a bit in the chat, I like the idea of Aaron being more this <clears throat> tragic figure who was killed, who is just, you know, became kind of weird and silent after the <clears throat> ritual and then was killed off by his sister and became this ghost. Um, and also that, like, the um, a painting of the family, that he made it because he's, you know, the painter. <laughs> Apparently, we didn't know that until, like, <laughs> just before his uh, fight or something like that. But, <laughs> you know, uh, he's the painter, so then... Like, there's a reason why these paintings are magic, because they were made by a ghost, <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Or made by someone who was at least, you know, touched by a weird ritual. Of course they'd have something magical. Hmm. And also so that he isn't in the paintings, but you lose, you scry, and then you can, like kind of see his, like, reflection, not really reflection shadow, like, implying his demise, but, you know, just as, like, there's someone else supposed to be here. You've seen him floating around. Connect the dots. <laughs> <laughs> so an artist, then. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Ah. Sorry. Trying to put on some music. Dark music by Adrian von Ziegler. Thank you, Adrian. Um, unfortunately, it was very loud. But it's fine now. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, so painting stuff. We can do some fun things with paintings. Mm -hmm. um, if you can summon things. For... So I, I'm kind of imagining, like, you're sort of going after these characters for very different reasons, which is good. <clears throat> and I feel like Aaron's is largely, like, kind of just to put him out of his misery. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's it's yeah. less like you are an active danger and need to be taken care of, and more like you just, you, you need rest. <laughs> like oh, an artist. Please, yeah. just um, go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, this is this is cool. Um, not really doing much with Lisbeth. Yeah, I. Is there an A in Lisbeth? Uh, yeah, Lisbeth without the A. Liz um... hyph Liz apostrophe Beth. <laughs> <laughs> Lisbeth. Lisbeth. Uh, yeah, I. Sorry. I don't know because, again, she's just kind of I read a little through like her canon backstory which is she's the youngest of them all which mm. kind of fun that she's the first to die fun in a very morbid way uh, <laughs> um but she's the youngest um her mother died in childbirth um so you know um then she was mostly erased by, like, a maid nanny kind of thing. Um, she was kind of feral as a child, just, you know, growling at people and being weird about food and meat and stuff. And then as she grew older, she became kind of, like, a very, like, stereotypically, you know, woman of noble birth, very quiet and very thing, but also she became sick with an illness uh, of which she eventually died and then she became this <laughs> werewolf <laughs> creature with an obsession for her dead mother. <laughs> so, you know. I'm imagining like... I don't I'm know what to, to do with that. No, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think of like parallels, right? Sort of metaphorical, allegorical sort of parallels. And there's something you said about this idea of like being a feral child who then grew up to become this very sort of quiet, sort of demure, you know, 
in keeping with her station, she must be very quiet and unassuming, and so on and so forth. I imagine I imagine that entire thing is just like bottling up the feral child inside that occasionally just comes out in outbursts. Mm. Um, and so maybe she has a, a, a string of unfortunate marriages where the husband died in tragic circumstances. Um, but the, that would be essentially allegorical to werewolf. You know, <laughs> perfectly normal person, but then just occasionally, ah, woo. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, yeah, that, that just kind of literally manifests itself. That would also explain, like, the quote-unquote illness part. Like, they think she is manic, essentially, but she's really just bottling up her feelings. Yeah. <laughs> because just... she's still a person. <laughs> and kind of a feral one at that, and she just wants to let it out, but because she keeps bottling it up, it becomes, like, out in these manic bursts, and people see that and look, oh no, a woman showing emotions. Cast, how scandalous. Yeah. She must be ill. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, if you know, the, the father was neglectful and the mother wasn't there, mm -hmm. it's entirely possible that the people who sort of brought them up, particularly the youngest who knew neither, basically, um, were maybe not the friendliest in trying to get that behaviour into the... <laughs> Mm -hmm. into the children you know and so there's a sort of yeah. i don't want to get i don't want to get too dark but <laughs> but like you, some extreme measures can be gone to to uh try and force a child to be yeah i agree i can see that i want to i want to add a certain depth to the characters rather than just they're a monster now <laughs> yeah they no, were bitey I, I, child, I, I so dog like person. <laughs> it's it's very much like the the two that like were presumably like the youngest. I don't know if Ambrose is the youngest brother, but I assume. But like they have issues with their parents, and that results in you know, one becoming a, a werewolf, essentially, because she didn't have her mother to guide her, and bottled up emotions and became a werewolf. <laughs> and the <laughs> other hated his father so much he killed him and then became a criminal. Like, you know, there's some fun stuff there about uh, parent your children. <laughs> Yeah. Or, uh, hey, if they're gonna have kids, look after the kids. Will be your untimely demise. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or they will kill you and turn into werewolves. These these are the things that are well known. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, the father gave all his children, like, a diary for their 18th birthday. <laughs> and that was, like, forced them to write in it. <laughs> That forced them to write in it and like presumably with the intent of then reading it like that, yeah, that's weird <laughs> in the room while they were writing it yeah which is super weird <laughs> so I, i've just written down a very strange sentence um which is killed the father for being neglectful slash overbearing uh, <laughs> i mean it's true it's like, yeah, ne neglectful of the important things like emotions and stuff like that, and overbearing in the ways that you just don't want to get out of my face, Dad. Overbearing you know? in control, neglectful yeah. in parenting. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. So they have more like issues with their parents, and Bethany and Aaron are more. Sibling they, issues. They had issues with each other. <laughs> yeah. Or more accurately, Aaron had issues with Bethany because Bethany did awful things to Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, which, you know, I think they were, they are meant to be like twins, so that also. Oh, I don't know. Makes some semblance of sense. I don't know exactly. Um. Yes, they are twins. Jeremiah is the oldest, then Aaron and Bethany were twins, Ambrose, and then Lisbeth. Okay, yeah. Is 
This is a good system I've got going on here. Don't worry about it. Um, um. Well, that, that's all all the game does actually tell you, right? It's not stuff that people have to have to do a deep dive on. I much rather wear the sand. Uh, I I think it is like man technically mentioned in all like the different pieces of lore and uh, diaries and such that you can read, but also it's so much easier to read on the wiki. <laughs> Are you saying that my reading voices that I gave characters in this game <laughs> are Listen, difficult to pay your attention to? Typing your voice is. Something else. The Skazinger! <laughs> He's here to tell you about space hell! What's wrong with that? Speaking of, what do we do with him? Do we need him? <laughs> I. I'm kind I of. No. <laughs> I, I sort of like the idea of Bethany having like a mentor in the occult, yeah. but not necessarily like. I don't know. I feel like the idea that they were both evil. And fighting for each other for control is just not a particularly interesting starting point for, for any reason other than to have two bosses. Yeah. That <laughs> sounded true. like a scythe. I... Scythe? <laughs> I mean... Look, if if Kaisinger wants to turn into a monster with scythes on his hands, that feels fitting, you know? <laughs> I mean, I agree that Kaisinger doesn't need to be a boss. I just, I don't even think, like... He needs to necessarily even, like, be alive at this point. I just think he should, like, be mentioned of, like, as, as backstory, both yeah. for Bethany and maybe for Patrick, because they had a thing going on that was, like, something. <laughs> something. <laughs> <laughs> the guy kept calling Patrick brother, but also... That's nothing. <laughs> yeah, they're not actually brothers, it turns out. No, they're not brothers, yeah. and also they weren't like brother figures or anything either, I believe. No. He just... He... Kais from what I can tell, Kaisinger killed someone with, like, through occult means. Um, Patrick got blamed for it, but because they... Because it happened because of occult means they couldn't like really figure out how or why or what he did. So they were like, I guess we'll just banish you from Ireland then. <laughs> so that's what they did. <laughs> and they took the accent in the, in the divorce. <laughs> um. um and then Kaisinger just kind of fucked off and started touring around Europe and became an occultist. Uh, that's what I could gather from the wiki and it made no real sense. <laughs> but I guess it's a backstory. <laughs> yeah, so d uh, question one, do we do anything with that? And question two, if we do, what? Um, I mean, I do think it's fun for Patrick to have, like, another stake in this as, like, specifically, Kaisinger is his enemy, you know. The, the main, the, the, this is just. got involved in this whole mess, but also Kaisinger isn't here. <laughs> So we just hop in this corner for some reason. <laughs> I was like, everyone else is going to draw. And then I was like, no, no one else is going to draw. It's fine. Um, what do we draw? To be fair, like, you could take these ideas and just make your own story and redesign these characters visually and actually come up with something pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. So, new project <laughs> after <laughs> Via. <laughs> just rewrite this game. Yeah. I I do Build want to do some fun. From scratch. 
do want to do some fun paintings. It might be fun to redesign these characters as like cool portraits. Because I imagine you've got the spooky sort of ghost high women sort of thing. Skeletal, maybe? I guess. Again, if we want to keep a nice sort of horror motif for each of them, we have like a witch. Uh, we have werewolf. Uh, ghost. Standard ghost. Um, I guess Bronan, which is a bad name now. Um, could be Skellybob. Big uh, it's skeleton high women thing. I, yeah. It could be uh, like mm. a devil. I guess that we, we got tie, a... that could tie into the criminal thing. Like he offers, mm -hmm. he tries like contract people and stuff. I, I guess yeah, that makes more sense of like. It depends on what facets you want to focus on. I'm, I'm thinking of the character as sort of like wrathful, in a sense. Um, uh, then a demon, they're angry. Yeah, <clears throat> I think I think Ambrose has more of a reason to be demonic than yeah. So Bethany. the skelly bob is a bit too emotionless. Yeah, that was just, yeah. yeah. So sort of demon, demon, angry. Writing. <clears throat> so I get I'll get rid of Bronan now. That doesn't make sense. Um Okay, so we, we've sort of got the general backstory. What's the progression of the game now? Because we, we spent most of the gameplay going, why are you doing this? You're just this is just filler. But do story. Mm -hmm. What's the story? What's the what's the what what should they have done? <laughs> um. Well, I feel like we can cut like most of the hell areas. <laughs> yeah. Just in general. Yeah. You mean you I don't, don't like think they really just added anything? You don't like just random doom maps. Yeah. yeah. With teleporter uh, puzzles and also maybe cut the whole time travel to the uh monastery in the past. Oh yeah, I forgot about where that. Where we killed everyone. Yeah, let, yeah let's I don't just avoid time travel nonsense. I don't, I don't know what the point is of that was. Is it implied that we killed every? I think it is implied that we killed everyone. <laughs> and we were the cause of everyone's death. I don't. Yeah, I mean, we did kill everyone. I don't know whether that's a story thing. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, we're, we're just, just going to ignore that and uh, do something else. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, we, we can monster. have a. But we can have a, a a monastery on the island, and you go there and you learn more about the stuff, and maybe monsters attack, and I mean, things can happen in a monastery. Um, things can yeah. happen in a monastery, just no monastery time travel. Yeah. Uh, Scythe of the Kel Celtic warrior who didn't really add anything <laughs> was just mentioned offhand. Like, hey, there was a Celtic warrior who had a scythe. And now you have it. <laughs> have fun. <laughs> Maybe they're like, oh, we have this, it's a famed artifact. We keep it in this new cabinet. Oh, look at it. It's fantastic. No, you can't have it. And then later in the game, the monastery, somebody runs into the mansion. It's like, oh my God, the monastery's on fire. And you go over there and it's just monsters attacking. And what Are we having monsters? I guess um, I guess that's that's a big point. <laughs> Are we gonna have yeah. monsters in this? <laughs> yeah, the, the I I think we can have monsters. I think it can still be like the same game, just not with all of these monsters, because some were a bit weird and random and maybe racially insensitive. Um Yeah. No no, no pirates. <laughs> uh no fighting random women monks for no Real reason. Uh, I don't know why they're fighting most... freaking cavemen with spear guns. No. I. Hmm. I'm thinking, I... like, maybe. Um. 
we can have the monastery, but it can be the case of like Ambrose is attacking the monastery kind of thing. Just to tie it back in. Oh um, yeah, that's an idea. Yeah, it doesn't have to be monsters. Even it could attacking be the monastery. Pillage. <laughs> Um, yeah, that, that would make more sense. That's good. And then, because he has been, you know, the one actually doing crimes and also kind of being the one who was very aggressive with his dad. And I know you said B crimes do gay as a joke, but also. You know, it's there. <laughs> oh yeah, yes. Yeah, it's, it's nice. To, it's nice for the character to have something else. You know, in this, in maybe like another point of contention day, for the. In the day and age of like, just after World War One, when this took place, uh, maybe not a good idea to you know be crimes too gay, <laughs> especially if you have a strict father who is very insistent that. You are wrong in every way. Yeah, like I say, that's, in, in that's a, another piece of like, uh, you know, hey, why did you hate your father? Well, <laughs> and you, um, he had this friend when you randomly had to go to the lighthouse. Um, you got this piece of lore that like he had this friend that he killed because. Um, friend wasn't on board with like murdering his dad, you know. Friend, boyfriend, kind of, you know. <laughs> Just spitballing. <laughs> How dare you spitball? We're here for perfectly formed ideas. Yes, I'm I mean, like yes on the gay part. I'm the gay um thief. Yeah, it, <laughs> I just thing it would also like make this the context of like this friend more important and not just as a offhand he had a friend now that friend is dead i wonder what happened <laughs> <laughs> you know mm. that felt a bit random and off like i know you want to establish establish he's a murderer but also you just established he murdered his dad i think that's you know already enough <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I dare say murdering your dad's pretty, you know, up there <laughs> with the murdering. Yeah, and then, you know, he kind of went off the rails after that and accidentally murdered his friends as well. Because he wasn't on board with B Crimes Do Gay. <laughs> I mean, he was on board with Do Gay, but just not with the crimes. So that's, you know. Maybe don't say that to someone who just murdered his dad. <laughs> <clears throat> or, if you want to go slightly more, uh, this is probably hammering the point home a bit too hard, but you could have it of like, you know, father wants to control everything, will go to extreme measures to do so, has discovered that his primary heir has a friend, does not agree with this situation, takes care that, of that friend. Is, yeah, that, that's another good point. That, that is definitely uh, the sort of thing that that father would do. And maybe that's a good reason to smack your dad over the head with a pool cue. <laughs> the problem is, is that Ambrose isn't the primary heir at this point, because you have both Jeremiah and Aaron who are old. I, it's, we've changed almost everything else. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And also, listen. <laughs> well, I, I feel mean, like I'd... he could just want more grandkids and stuff. Just in yeah, case. I mean, yeah, yeah. Maybe he had, he had like this whole plan for Ambrose because usually noblemen have a plan for all their kids. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> which, which, which son is it? Is he the second or third? Third. You have Jeremiah, Aaron, and then Ambrose, so he's the youngest son. Because what? Okay, yeah, the first one inherits everything. The second one normally goes into military service, and the third one normally goes to the clergy. Well, there's your answer. Ambrose <laughs> certainly do not want to go to the clergy, <laughs> and that's why he's attacking the monastery. <laughs> he 
even more reason for him to attack the monster. Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah. And the, the fourth one always just gets thrown in a bin because it's off. Weird. <laughs> well, there is, is no he... fourth one, so that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> uh, not that we know of. That's um... true, but also I didn't really <laughs> want to add more characters to this. <laughs> But I, I am interested. If we're, if we're trying to paint Aaron, if you pardon the expression, if we're trying to paint Aaron as a tragic figure, um, you said the second son typically goes into the military. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If if we want like the paintings of Aaron and and the weird painting scapes that you end up going through to be sort of represented, I'm I'm thinking a little bit of if you know Metal Gear Solid, there's a Metal Gear Solid Three. There's a boss called the Sorrow. Is it the Sorrow? Yeah, um, and basically they sort of, as the name suggests, not happy, um, and they sort of make you go through a dreamscape of sort of their feelings, as it were, and the, the feelings of the people you may or may not have killed um, over the course of the game. And uh, I feel like Aaron could be doing a similar thing to that, that most of Aaron's sort of haunting aspects are to do with basically just trying to make you understand how he's feeling, and he's been, he's been through some stuff. He went through war, came back, and then got tortured by his sibling. I mean... <laughs> he's not had a good life. Also, um, the point, I do want to mention real quick that Jeremiah has also been a soldier, because that's how he met Patrick. They both met in the First World War. Hmm. But just in general, uh, Aaron probably also would have fought in World War One. World War One, not a great time. No, canonically, <laughs> to the real life, <laughs> to uh, real history, not a great time. Yeah. Especially if you're like slightly sensitive to, you know, um, anything. Yeah, World War One was such a weird time. When, whenever you hear about it, mm. oh yeah, they didn't, you know, had to like invent a whole new book of rules on, you know, weapon yeah. use after yeah. that. Yeah, they had a whole new group of rules because the they that... went like, yeah. yeah, maybe this isn't cool. Actually, <clears throat> everyone is, you know, sick and dead and awful, or very traumatized. <laughs> yeah. And, and Trick is huge... being divided up by nationality. That's, that's a, such a weird one. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, that's a Scottish bit of the trench. You don't want to go there. They're all rowdy. But, you know, like, yeah, we're across the, from the this part of them and there's, uh, they're fine. It's like, there's war. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The World War One is when the gentlemen's were at war. It's not... But, yeah. I mean, it would also be fun that if, like, if Aaron is indeed, like, showing off these illusions kind of thing of what he feels and sees, what he felt like, because his life hasn't been great, um, then it'd also be, like, interesting for Patrick, because, you know, Patrick also served. Um, mm. And, like, you know, of course he was friends with Jeremiah, but also, like, you know, fellow soldier, brotherhood, kind of stuff. <laughs> Do things happen. <laughs> Share trauma. <laughs> yeah. I mean, with the whole ghosty thing of Aaron, he could just start giving, like, Patrick flashbacks and stuff. Yeah. That could be one of his things. Um... It's Clive Barker, it can be as gruesome as it wants. <laughs> yeah, is this, exactly. like... With the possible exception of the occasional line that Patrick says to somebody for inexplicable reasons, because almost nothing he said was it made any sense to me. Um, <laughs> is this, like, the first idea of, like, oh, this is how we can make Patrick integrate into the story? <laughs> um... I mean... Yeah, essentially, because... Like, beyond the circumstance, beyond the fact that, oh, we fought together, oh, this person got yeah, in the way of it, like... 
as an actual character. <laughs> um, canonically, um, it's Patrick and Jeremiah fought in the war together. Um, they fought against like a shaman of the pirates group that aren't actually pirates, but also they kind of are, you know. Um, Jeremiah saved Patrick's life, then gave him the the stone, the green stone that gave Patrick his powers. Um, they stayed in contact, and Patrick became a like supernatural investigator, essentially. That's the canon backstory. <laughs> oh yeah, he was supposed to be a skeptic, wasn't he? <laughs> um, yes, it's it's what like to that? he. I mean, even on the wiki, it's like Patrick was a skeptic, and then he got superpowers. So you know, I guess guess that would change everything. <laughs> I didn't really <laughs> so he's go not anywhere, actually then. a skeptic when the game starts. <laughs> he's only a skeptic in his backstory. <laughs> So I was, I was thinking about what we could do with these ideas, like, to create enemies, and I was thinking of, like, creatures coming out of paintings of Aaron, sort of, like... Mm -hmm. Have you seen Kevin Bacon's... Not, is it Kevin? No, not Kevin Bacon, is it? Um, like Kevin Bacon's the actor. Uh, Francis Bacon. Uh, no. Uh, uh, the, the modern Francis Bacon, uh, should specify. <laughs> Um. Wait, who, who's made a bacon? I think it's Francis Bacon. Was I very ding? Why is this called what? What? Characters. Oh. Character design. Sorry, the, the Discord is making notification sounds. That's why A, I turned off the notifications, and B, they're not the right ones. <laughs> of course. Discord is a well polished app, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all working as intended, all the time, every time. Yeah. Let's try that. Hey, back. Hi. You did character design. Um, sorry, yes, I was thinking of, like, um, uh, monsters and, like, sort of monsters that would come out of the paintings that represent his... Oh, yeah, I was looking at Francis Bacon. I'm very easily distracted right now, and I think I'm thinking of a different painter. But anyway, um, and I was thinking of, like, things that you could do using the motifs of the horrors that he would have seen in World War I. Um, and I just got this idea of, like, a sort of paint... Like, sort of... Have you ever seen, like, goopy piles of oil paint? Just sort of, like, figures sort of deformed strange shapes of figures that sort of vaguely resemble people in gas masks that have been sort of had limbs blown off and things um, like that mm -hmm. i feel like there's definitely a visual thing you could do with that oh yeah um, absolutely I, I don't want to say hey we can take the horrors of world war one and make it into something that looks real cool um but... well, i i get it <laughs> but if you, you if, can yeah, make horrors wanna... into artistic horrors <laughs> yeah because that's that, that's what aaron will be trying to do is just trying to sort of Get this That's down, get know. it out of his head. He's a painter. Mm. He knows how to paint and how to convey emotion via paint, and sometimes that will be very literally. Yes. With paints <laughs> and yes. creatures coming out of paints to yes. traumatize you. <laughs> He's the artist. Yeah, okay, so yeah, got monsters from paint, got random monsters of. Um. Bethany's creation. Yeah. Uh, I, gu I guess you could just have random bandits and such ro robbing the house, pillaging the house. Uh, not necessarily at the bequest of uh, Ro, what's his name? Ambrose. <laughs> but... Uh, oh, but he, you know, he can be, like, at this point, be kind of not really the leader essentially but more but still like you know if you're gonna tell a bunch of highwaymen there's a bunch of money in a monastery they yeah. might want to do something about it. yeah <laughs> where ambrose will go crime will follow exactly um, um yeah and um and if we're going with the kind of demon thing 
mm-hmm. for this character. Could you get like uh, at the beginning? It's just like you know people breaking in and trying to steal stuff from the mansion or the monastery or whatever. And maybe later on you start seeing more of them that are sort of more demonic in form. They've been sort of with Amber sort of encouraging their more sort of oh yeah that'd be desires fun. desires to do horrible things. They become more demonic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Could have like a funny cutscene where like you see two of them interact, one who is who has turned and one who hasn't, and the one who hasn't is just like, What what's going on with you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, um What happened? <laughs> and then just, you know, good lord You're turning into a demon. <laughs> I I guess with Lisbeth it's either like cursive wolf like creatures or like you know what's already there like skeletons because also she's like a necromancer kind of considering whatever she did with her dead mother so uh, yeah, my my assumption with Lisbeth is that she is like she had nothing. She was the youngest child. Her mother died when she was two. She remembers nothing about her. her father is completely detached, and so she's sort of like desperate for some sort of family. And the siblings they're off doing their own thing and whatever, being horrible to each other. Don't go near Bethany. She's too busy torturing Aaron. Um, <clears throat> and Ambrose is just angry all the time. So she she wants something. So I imagine you know we meet her at the mausoleum, and I can kind of imagine that maybe she as a kid spent a lot of time there because just this is where the family is <laughs> the rest yeah. of the family are absent so it might as well be around these ones you know and so she'll probably take some sort of interest in necromancy or whatever if, you know so how can I get the, how can I get my family back essentially pining yeah it's pining. yeah that makes sense Again, I, li- I like my villains to have a bit of depth, <laughs> a bit of sympathy mm-hmm. to them, a bit of a reason other than I am evil. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I I like that. I, also, I was just thinking of like maybe because um, I'm mostly thinking about locations like at this point and like we talked about the monastery but maybe like we can turn the monastery in kind of like a chapel near the house still religious but like smaller in scale oh yeah hey, it doesn't have to be huge <laughs> yeah um then you have the mausoleum for Lisbeth um I like I mean like what other area because I like I would like to do more with the house because the house essentially felt like nothing I yeah. guess with Aaron doing more, it would already, like, be more in the house. But, like... Because nothing really happens in the house apart from you finding some lore about the siblings in, like, diary entries. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can have, like... I guess, I guess that's the fun thing you could do with a game set in a massive mansion. Is like, Mm -hmm. what things do you have in a mansion? And how can we turn those into interesting game mechanics? (laughs) Because there wasn't really... None of... The different parts of the mansion did feel different in the sense of like, oh, this is a kind of old Tudor bit. This is a bit... This is where all the bedrooms are. This is Mm -hmm. a library or whatever. Mm -hmm. But there was no reason anything you did in those areas couldn't have been in somewhere else. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. no, nothing. The only thing that mattered with the environment was that you found a book in the library. That was it. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everything else, any anything else, could have just happened in a nondescript void. <laughs> How do we make this without it being stolen? <laughs> like a PS2 Harry Potter game. Yeah, we could do crummy little PlayStation style thing. <laughs> yeah, it's again kind of thing like how how could you turn it more into things actually taking place within the mansion and not 
let's go to this place and now we're in hell. <laughs> yeah. That was yeah, that was when I started to worry about this game. <laughs> yeah. It's not suddenly hell, like what? Seriously thought I'd have somehow managed to sequence break it. <laughs> yeah. It felt very out of place, especially like the first time where you just went into a random room <laughs> and found hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Library has to have jumping on top of bookcases and floating books. You can do stuff with that. Mm -hmm. That's how you can sort of unlock things, is that only after Jeremiah dies does he start throwing books at you in the library and you can use those to platform. <laughs> You can do that. It, it's not like you've, you know, it's not like a Metroidvania. You've unlocked this ability. No, there's another angry ghost in the building. <laughs> <laughs> and you can use their anger to your advantage. Uh -huh. <laughs> you unlocked dead friend. So, yeah, I, I like it Everyone. being more of like, you know, you have the mausoleums for Lisbeth, but also like a... Because there was, like, at some point in, like, a children's bedroom kind of thing where you hear, yes. like, heard, like, noise, like a visual... Not a visual. Opposite of visual. <laughs> auditorial cue of, like, something went on here with Lisbeth. Um, uh, which makes sense because, you know, yearning for family and, you know, one of, like, her remnants soul shenanigans you know this memory of like staying in the nursery because that's where she often was mm. <laughs> on her own <laughs> um so she kind of has that area and Bethany I, I like the bit where Bethany had like you know secret room secret hallway in her room which went to like the Aaron basement where Aaron was kept which is why she was you know having a lot of rats around I, I like that bit that specific bit I like <laughs> <laughs> where she wrote oh I wonder where these rats are coming from and then you find that the entry to where Aaron's corpse is is in our bedroom <laughs> Okay, I'm I'm slightly modifying this to between the walls. Yeah. So there's just a like it 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 starts as just like space. You you find a a door just in a wall in a bedroom that leads to a space between walls, and you sort of claustrophobically move between the spaces between walls until you find it going down and underneath the house into sort of creepy basement bits. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Maybe also because um, that's Bethany's area, essentially, the space between walls. Um, that's maybe also where you find, you know, actually a portal to the Forever Autumn or whatever that place was called. Because I do like the idea of, you know, getting to this weird in-between place um, at the end. Yeah, I kind of. I, I, for some reason, the sort of the Forever Autumn or Eternal Autumn or whatever it's called, Forever Autumn's the song, so it's not that. Oh, um, <laughs> it's one of those I, ones I don't that know I remember. So. <laughs> it's from um, War of the Worlds. Um, although it got released as a single, but this is quite a good song. Um, I quite like. For some reason, when when thinking about these characters, the phrase "forever autumn" and having like an, a a place that it, a sort of metaphysical location that is forever autumn feels more irony to me. This I don't know why. Yeah, that makes sense. But I think it's because autumn is often associated with like getting ready for winter, so things dying, but not really. <laughs> You know, like, symbolically, winter is death, and autumn is the stage right before. And that's kind of the state in which Aaron is living constantly. <laughs> mm. And also, it's it sounds very, like, painfully poetic, <laughs> you <Yeah>. know? <laughs> but, sort of vaguely peaceful, almost. 
Sort of like the, some, something that he's trying to get. As well. That could still be a fun thing of like something Aaron maybe once thought of and you know made a painting of and named and yeah. then Bethany took it and twisted it. <laughs> ah yes, that's that's a good point. It's something that Bethany took. That's cool. I like that. That's a very good point. Also, um, I, I don't think Aaron like created any of it, but it is like something that was thought of by him of like this very peaceful in between place where he isn't like plagued by anything. <laughs> and obviously Bethany had to take that and make it into something horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> See, I was just going to say, every time he tries to paint a landscape, it comes out as being autumn, regardless of the season that he's painting. <laughs> he just naturally gravitates towards those colours, and it just becomes autumn. Mm. And just seems to fit with, like, whatever weird sibling rivalry they're going on. Or not even rivalry at this point. I don't know, like, what... Bethany is kind of just torturing Aaron. That's yeah, they've got their own thing. It, it's not, they're not really fighting amongst each other, it is really just Bethany versus Aaron. <laughs> yeah. And the rest of them are doing whatever they want. Yeah. So, and even, even then, it kind of feels like Aaron's just kind of doing it defensively, because Bethany's doing it. Oh yeah, Aaron... Aaron um, Aaron's not necessarily malignant here. I just feel like, again, it's sort of like the sorrow. It's not like we're trying, not explicitly trying to hurt you. It's just sort of like, my, my pain is now being expressed. <laughs> yeah. I. And that needs to be dealt with. <laughs> yeah. I, Aaron just needs a hug. I think, no, just as fun lore in my head, I do think that would be like, they're twins. <laughs> you have a boy twin and a girl twin, of which the boy twin is arguably has more quote unquote feminine traits for that time. <laughs> and of which the girl twin has more interest in science and stuff um, and being strong and like these experiments, which is considered more masculine at that time. There is a fun dynamic there of, or at least resentment from Bethany of like, you could do what I can't, but you choose not to. <laughs> hmm. That's, yeah. <laughs> oh, what's this painting called? Summer Fun in the Sun. But it's autumn? <laughs> Look, it's supposed to, don't worry about it. It's artistic license. Everything's orange. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Let's spell Aaron with three A's. Run. Two's enough. <laughs> Aaron. Aaron. Just to also bring it back to uh, parent your children or, you know, stuff will happen. <laughs> yeah. May also, you know, explain a kind of, I mean, World War One is obviously something rather different. Um, but the idea of like, you know, you have, you have this son who is, you know, as you say, exhi exhibits more feminine traits than masculine. Um, and they're the second son, so it's like, well, we can sort that out, off to the military. Boom, off you go. And that obviously went perfectly fine. Oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely nothing to worry about there. <laughs> um. Yeah, so it's, it's a bit of the case of, like, Bethany is jealous, resentful of what Aaron 
could do. Yeah. And Aaron is just suffering because of it. <laughs> um. Uh, both because of his sister and also because the traits he wants to express are not considered good or something that should be sorted out in the military. Which is also could be like a fun of like expressed in this thing of like Aaron, you know, went to the military, went to war, came back, and you know, he could still set up this kind of art studio thing, even if it wasn't like officially approved. And Bethany still had to like hide in the walls to do anything. Mm. Oh, well, in the game, I thought this was going to be a thing. In the game, Aaron's studio is like behind the donkey shed. Oh yeah. Like yeah. that's not a normal place to have an art studio. That's oh, a place no. where you, you you try and hide what you're doing. Mhm. Mm that's true. So, yeah. Well, 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 but then, how does that tie into the idea of like he painted all of the family portraits? Yeah. Maybe, I... it's the, maybe it's one of those things where it's like, oh yes, son, you have this ability. You can use it occasionally for family portraits, but no more than that. And at no point does the father consider that, like, in order to actually get that good, he needs to be painting a lot. Uh, <laughs> I also fun idea for a painting that's along the same lines of like the one we see in game. Um, but like, not just the family port. You have like one family portrait that shows what they've become, kind of like you know the monsters they've become. Um, the creatures, um, but then also you have a portrait where it's like you look at it through your scry, um, and at first it's like you know a very normal portrait, not really normal because it's like a happy family, and then you look through the scry and you just see what it was. <laughs> you see like oh right yeah. Um, Essentially, like, you go from happy, perfect family to, like, um, Lisbeth kind of being neglected, Ambrose constantly being very angry, their father just not really doing anything, being, being a strict terrible. figure, um, their mother dead, <laughs> um, Jeremiah... I I like to say Jeremiah not there in the in that version of the painting. Because I think Jeremiah is kind of the outlier in this and that he's like like they in the game they keep saying like that he ran away from it all. So I like that idea of, as well of like Yeah. You know, from everyone else's perspective, it looks like he wasn't there. <laughs> he and Ben. And then you kind of have Bethany, like, bullying Aaron. <laughs> like, that's what it was like.
I guess that also ties into the idea that when Jeremiah dies, he just becomes this sort of incorporeal poltergeist. It's like his whole thing was that he just sort of ran away. He just wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So in death, he's just not there. <laughs> yeah. His influence is felt, but he's not, you know, he's not a thing. No, he's he is the elder brother. He is above it all, <laughs> kind of thing. Um. Beth and Beth? No, there's only one Beth. 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 Oh, oh, Liz, oh Beth, Liz, Lizbeth. Beth and, yeah, Bethany, Bethany and Elizabeth. Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beth is Bethany. And Lizbeth is Liz, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> Bethany always sounds like such a fake name to me, and I don't know why. It, it it sounds it feels like you know we got this AI to work out the name from the nickname, it's... and the, the Todd became Todrick. I mean, Bethany to me at this point feels like a meme. That's why I was laughing when. Uh, Patrick said it in the game like Bethany. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna have to clip that. <laughs> it feels not real in the sense that it feels like a meme to me. I mean, I have all the voice files. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will have to go through them one by one again because they're just called. Par one, par two. Um, but yeah, I can I can find the file that just says Bethany, and I'll, I'll put that in the locked rotation. Why not? <laughs> I've already got the Dara to the garden. Um, oh, what? What? How? What? How innocent we were <laughs> that that was. <laughs> <laughs> the door to the garden. And then we didn't go to the garden for like another two hours. <laughs> no, we didn't, no. We had to find the key to the door to the garden. God, I, I was just, I was watching those last two cutscenes and just like, what is going on with this voice? <laughs> this accent is just <laughs> impenetrable. It's absolute nonsense. <laughs> and as, as well, I think it was Kiro, as Kiro pointed out, like... One of the only two voice actors in the game that is credited is the one that does the worst job. <laughs> like, I, I mean, Jeremiah was lacking a bit of oomph in the final cutscene, but at the very least, the accent seemed consistent. <laughs> yeah. I I don't even know what Patrick's was. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I, I think they tried to take away the accent when he got banished from Ireland. You're not allowed the accent anymore. Learn a new one. Oh, I just want to paint these characters now. <laughs> <laughs> New project. Because they've sort of solidified in my head as, as this completely different sort of set of people. Mm -hmm. Like, we, we could just, we could make this into a new thing. I don't think anybody would cry plagiarism because it's significantly different from, you know, change mm -hmm. the names probably, but... Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't think anyone would care, to be honest. No. Clive Barker might. <laughs> I don't think he was involved with this project at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, here's a few ideas for spooky ghosts. Off you go. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> they decided to make a game where you go to space hell. Mm -hmm. Actually, that feels very Clive Barker, yeah. to be fair. But... I still alive. We can't just ignore him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, if you, ch if you change the names around and have this as an idea... I don't think anybody would cry foul. It's sign it's different enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. We changed enough things. <laughs> I mean, I'm not about to try and monetize this, but... <laughs> no, but still, we could. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Change the names. Call Ambrose Conan. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> everyone, yeah, everyone gets new names, it's fine. Bethany becomes uh, 
Bethaniel. <laughs> Bethaniel. Bethaniel is Bethaniel. <laughs> <laughs> Liz just means small. Um. <laughs> uh, just to make feel make Liz that feel worse. <laughs> Ambrose becomes Arbrose. <laughs> so that the grammar makes sense. Um. <laughs> Aaron becomes Aaron. <laughs> yeah, it's With just a few A's. more A's. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe an H for good measure. <laughs> We're already like halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah is never named to be mm -hmm. thematically appropriate to, <laughs> to his his absence. <laughs> yeah, Patrick just keeps calling him friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> friend, friend and pal, <laughs> and then he's just never named after. They always think... call him the eldest son or brother or yeah. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised how like much you can get away with not actually referring to a character's name. I remember I was really surprised when somebody first pointed out to me that in Final Fantasy X, nobody says the main character's name. Which makes sense, because it's the only character you can change the name of and it has voice acting. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah. so they couldn't say the name of the character. Well, yeah, but it's also like part of the story and stuff. Yeah, like stuff's happening and most of it's not to do with the main character. <laughs> well... None of it's technically just character. Not yeah, not well kind of, sort of well we won't get into that. That that's a draw through for another day, slash year. Look, he, look he, he's imaginary. It's uh, just it's, it's fine, don't worry about it. <laughs> the main character is fine. No one says his name. But they do say that they want to be a blitz ball. Um Oh, there was uh, on the RPG Limit Break, which is a Twitch channel where people do speedruns of RPGs, because most big speedrunning events don't want people doing 12-hour speedruns. <laughs> Takes up a lot of time. Um, but they recently had the uh, actual marathon thing with a bunch of people like SGDQ or whatever, um, and they did an AI playthrough of Final Fantasy X, so it's like it was a tool assisted speedrun, but instead of just being recorded inputs, they have an AI making decisions which is kind of interesting and it just completely broke <laughs> a lot of the time all the way through because the person who set it up forgot to comment out some code that they were using for testing and then they, they tried their best getting through the rest of the game, but it was yeah, bless them it was nice, but they, they did some fun glitchy stuff with that, so I just wanted to remind people of that, because if you want to look at it, it's kind of funny. But bear in mind that it's also a bit... I feel a bit bad for the people doing it. Because <laughs> it all went wrong. But anyway, that's not to do with this. There's something about Aggie. When we open up Aggie, I just immediately start doing tangents. Look at what we've done now. <laughs> look at the, everything you've read. <laughs> Which is yeah. odd, because now I, just, I just really want to paint them. <laughs> Have an art program open. I also want to paint them, which is kind of a pain. <laughs> and I can't well, paint. I, I, you can commission us to paint, no. Um, <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I have... The, the, the annoying thing is, I actually have a good... Re I, I've got Rebel, which is that program that was on sale for like £10. Yeah, and this same. Sort of realistic... Attempt at being a realistic painting program, and I'm like... Mm. That's a good way to practice. <laughs> yep. Oh, I've got so many other things to do. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad because I had the last couple of days off. <laughs> and now I'm coming okay. up with even more things to clog my time with. No, don't. Um. So what's Patrick's deal? <laughs> That's interesting that we've done all of this conversation and we haven't once mentioned the main character. Um... <laughs> It's probably kind of a problem with him, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, like the reason he was there is because he's Jeremiah's friend. Mm. And Jeremiah calls him over to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't honestly know why Jeremiah calls us over. 
no. Uh, in in the plot of the game, the actual game, it's to help kill the other siblings. Yeah, I. I guess try and trick you into doing that because you have the crystal, so you must have magical powers, and thus would be able to help. Yeah, but why was he caught there in the first place? What was the um, reason okay. behind it? Oh, it's because Patrick is a supernatural investigator and because of the sibling supernatural shenanigans that have been going on. And Jeremiah uh, doesn't know that, I guess. I, I mean, he's trying to trick Patrick in the game, so I guess that's why. But, but in like, our game... <laughs> in, in this game, he actually could just not know because he wasn't there. <laughs> You know, so he doesn't know about. Oh yeah, he, he having become a witch, he was doing of God knows what. <laughs> he, he left. Just <laughs> he just returns and everything's gone to crap, and it's like, uh, <laughs> like um, hey, uh, Patrick, please help. I think <laughs> my siblings have become um. Undead? Question mark. <laughs> well, I, I guess just at the start of the game, as far as he's concerned, he's just arrived back home, and then everything and everything's a mess. Just like yeah, things are broken, and the mansion's in disrepair. He's like, "Hey, Patrick, can you help me move a couch?" That kind of thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, I feel. I don't really like the fact that Patrick is like. A supernatural investigator with a magical medallion. Mm -hmm. You know that that whole thing that killing the shaman of war. I don't feel like. No, I don't think. First of all, I don't think Patrick needs the medallion, and also like the whole killing the shamans in the Great War. That can go. Yeah. I, that could be a I, thing. I like the idea of him, just him being supernatural. Just maybe like I mean I I still like the idea of him having magical powers and stuff. Just, but if these kids if these kids can get it, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you've established there you live in a world where some kids can do a ritual and then end up undead. <laughs> um, so there could just be a guy who has magical powers for whatever reason. I think there should be. Uh, I, I'm I'm one of those people who gets annoyed at like, um, the positive coincidences. So it did. Oh, it did. You know, it just so happens you were supernatural, so you can save the day, etc. Like, I, I feel like there should be a re or at the very re at the very least there should be a reason why his supernatural instinct led him to go there. Something like that. Yeah. Like there were the the actual the rather than just oh coincidentally you were supernatural so you can help out with this problem rather than I mean, something in Patrick is, when if Patrick can scry and that's one of his he would definitely like notice something about Jeremiah right when he scries at him <laughs> yeah maybe yeah, yeah but yeah that makes sense because they fought they fought together in the war so he probably sort of keeping an eye on him all the way through. It's like, what is, what's your deal? <laughs> oh, what, what's going on with you? Why are you all, like, I cry, you go all glowy. What? What? Yeah. And there's like <laughs> no, nothing necessarily remarkable about Jeremiah himself. And it's only when you realize that he is a part of a whole that is absent mm -hmm. that he starts to go, oh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not you. It's the whole shebang. Yeah. And maybe that's why he sort of leapt on the idea of like, you know, Jeremiah's, hey, can you come help me sort things out at my family home? And he's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I want to get to the bottom of this. This yeah. is fascinating.
I I do like the idea of maybe like maybe all Patrick can do at that point is cry. Like he has a yeah. crying ability, that's what he can do. He can not do the flaming fingers or whatever. <laughs> like you get a spell in the game and it's actually a point of like oh, there's more things to learn. I can become, you know What <laughs> What was the fire about? Essentially. <laughs> I'm still that that is still the most baffling thing in this entire experience, which is saying something. Just random fire from the fingers. Yeah, it, it was really like unexplained because you learn everything else, but then also you can just do that for some reason. And you're just supposed to figure out that you can do that. I guess. Mm. Like, I guess the yeah, hint that's... that you can do that is because he lights Molotov that way, but even then, it's like... <laughs> you didn't notice that. <laughs> you're throwing Molotov, you're in a combat situation, you're not gonna notice that. I feel like as a character, was sort of, I don't know, it might have just been that little conversation we had about, like, <laughs> you know, we got the invitation to go to the manor. I was like, yes, I want to work out what this is. There's a bit more of a sort of, like, enthusiastically curious sort of individual. Mm -hmm. yeah. More so than your sort of generic tough guy. I will rid the world of evil. No. That's doesn't feel like Patrick. I feel like Patrick has more... There's more life to him than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, he has... I don't know. I keep returning to that scene where he just slept the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that that's more Patrick. His arms. <laughs> that's Patrick. It, it's very much like... Uh, a, I don't know how you would describe this in terms of personality, but it's very much like a comedic kind of gruffiness more than, you know, your brooding protagonist gruffiness. More like... There is more life to him than that. He's just, you know, he's gonna have reactions to things. He's gonna... Slut of the face of the corpse. He's gonna. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the amount of times he, he just sees the oh, weird stuff happen and his eyebrow just raises like, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, during that whole, like, scene where, like, uh, Jeremiah was monologuing at him, it was more like his exp expression was more like. What, what is going on? <laughs> Hold <laughs> up. <laughs> I'm the protagonist. I'm not following this. <laughs> it wasn't you... like a phase of betrayal. It was more of like... Okay, what? <laughs> <laughs> and it makes sense of this. What? Well, explain. Which, I mean, I don't blame him. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was amazed he managed to follow it after that point. <laughs> yeah. And then the what turned into more of like, a, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> if you keep that attitude it. through the game, you know? Yeah. I don't, That's the kind of... of character that... When pe if some people started monologuing, monologuing he just shoot them. <laughs> yeah. He, or, like, or like... His kind of character, yes. He probably, I, I feel like... He, he wouldn't shoot them, he'd throw a shoe at them. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something more petty. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Sorry, I just I realized I stole that from somewhere. Uh... It's, yeah, it's less of like an, 
kill you and more like please shut up <laughs> just stop talking yeah stop. i'm not Come making on, any man. sense <laughs> i'm just gonna put <laughs> yes exactly like that for his shoes i'm just gonna put that there i know what that means <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Who's throwing through? <laughs> he carries a spare in his bag. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, I, I think. That works also because, um, I'm gonna say this, Patrick doesn't look like Nathan Gray. He still has, like, the your yeah. classic protagonist features, but there's also more of, like, an adventurous playfulness to it with the long yeah. hair and the, the he's actual not really beard, good, but, like, you know, <laughs> knee length pants kind of and just more adventurous. He's, he's got more of a feeling of like the the main character from the mummy. Yeah, so yeah. A, a Brendan Fraseriness. <laughs> yeah, he's, he, that that's more his vibe. And he dresses like him, so he might as well have the same vibes. <laughs> when did the mummy come out? Uh oh, good point. Um, this is complicated by the fact that there's a new mummy film. Uh, oh, 1999, uh, apparently. Yeah. So it could, yeah, could have been inspired so, by it. Yeah. yeah, a couple of years before. I mean, yeah, because he was wearing pretty much the exact same uh, clothing. <laughs> I mean, I feel like Brendan Fraser would do a better job voicing Patrick than whoever did. So. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but that's a go. different matter. <laughs> just get Brandon, we just get Brendan Fraser to voice him. No, that's <laughs> that is the only thing we're gonna keep from the original game is the voice actor. <laughs> <laughs> but we do explain that the character is putting on that voice <laughs> <laughs> just for fun. I like the idea of like in a serious moment, Patrick just dropping his entire accent. <laughs> and everyone's just looking at him like, what? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> You're not Irish? You thought that was Irish? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that was just an elaborate practical joke that I was pulling on uh, Jeremiah. <laughs> <laughs> Been doing it for so long, it got out of hand. <laughs> Just the idea of Patrick just like Jeremiah assumed he was Irish, and Patrick thought because of his name, probably because he's Irish McIrish face, Patrick Galloway. <laughs> Jeremiah was like, "Oh, you're Irish," and Patrick found it so hilarious that he just kept up the ruse, <laughs> just waiting for him to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. How bad of an Irish accent can I, <laughs> can I do with it? And he won't figure it out. Apparently the answer is very bad. <laughs> Apparently, according to Kira, the, the voice actor for Patrick is actually also in the game version of The Mummy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it works. It works out. <laughs> that, that's, that's too good. <laughs> I'm hoping they're not they're not playing Brendan Fraser. <laughs> okay. They're playing Brendan Fraser. Um Actually they're probably playing like the The other guy. I can't remember his name. Three different characters, okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's only supposed to be one character, but the voice wavered so much. <laughs> They just cut up the voice lines into roughly applicable <laughs> voices, and well, we can make three characters out of this, why not? Yeah, 
Imhotep, Ardeth Bay, and Benny. What? Wait, Lovely. no, no. <laughs> no? No. 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 No? No. No. Okay, no. Imhotep. <laughs> Hang on, let me write this down. And who's the third one? No. Arthur Bay. <laughs> I, I know two of them immediately, and no. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Arthur Bay, fine. He can play Arthur Bay. <laughs> That's the one I can remember his name of. Yeah, he can play Arthur Bay. The other two, no. Him not. <laughs> this is a serious stream. Very serious. <laughs> That's the only thing I've drawn. Um, You've drawn some some faces here and there. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a couple of thinky faces and a little gruff face. I want a sad face. Sad face. <laughs> yeah. Jeremiah gets killed. Mm. <laughs> Look, it's it's like you've seen me chatting on Discord. I end every sentence with an emoji. Mm -hmm. This I is know. just how I work. So <laughs> I need I need yeah. if I need to convey an emotion with a, a a sentence, I just put an emoji at the end of it. Yeah, and okay. so people doesn't think don't think he's all. <laughs> No, it's so people don't think I'm being too serious. That I write something and I'm like, this is supposed to be humorous. Put a smiley face! <laughs> I I like this new game we've made. Yeah, this came together surprisingly quickly. Like, <laughs> I mean, everything was there. That it, it, it just says how much was there in the game yeah. that just didn't get used at all. Yeah, they, or they have, they have a, a solid foundation. They just yeah. kind of padded it too much. <laughs> a solid foundation on which they just put a bouncy cast. Like, yeah. <laughs> so you can build a building with that, you know? <laughs> this is what happens when you don't credit your writers. <laughs> <laughs> or you don't have writers to credit. <laughs> Either or. Yeah, if if writers don't appear in your credits, that's the, yeah. that's a bad sign. I mean, yeah. Clive Barker we didn't even want to get credited, so yeah, Just, you can put me in the title, but that's it. <laughs> he, yeah, he I like this. Like, played through a bit of them, but just take my just take my name out of credits. But you, but the, the, I, you put way too much faith into this process to assume that he played it. <laughs> I did. Why not he threw notes Clive and then left. It's Clive Barker. It's a man I know absolutely nothing about. <laughs> <laughs> so you assume he plays video games? That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I I think I I know almost nothing, which is more than you. Um, <laughs> so, um, but I I I think he's one of those horror authors who just does nothing but write. The kind of Garth Marenghi sort of, you know. Mm. I'm one, of those, I'm one of those people, who, one of the few people in the world who can claim that they have written more books than they've read. You know? That kind of thing. Uh, so I don't think he's got time for games, because he's too busy being an auteur. But I may be wrong. That might just be Stephen King. Uh, no, Stephen King's got time to um, argue over $12 um, on Twitter with Elon Musk. <laughs> Wonderful. else uh, we need to talk about or want to talk about uh I, I i think if we go on any longer we'll start changing things that don't need to be changed yeah it's it's also 10 so <laughs> yeah we have i think talked about it for about as long as i played oh yeah on uh, the, today so probably. no more more today more. yeah you stopped right at nine okay <laughs> <laughs> you had to like set things up but like it didn't yeah. take an hour. <laughs> well, usually it feels like it. Um, but yeah, this is cool. We, we feel free to chat about this again at another point in the future. This is not a. Well, I'm not saying the case closed. We've we've oh, no. 
Let found everything place. in this idea. I want to make portraits for the settlers. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see who gets to them first. <laughs> Uh, you probably. I, I <laughs> I've got a, you <laughs> I've got a massive backlog of things to do. <laughs> um, then you know, and then there's you gallivanting around making good paintings of geese. <laughs> Terrible. Just <laughs> rubbing it in our faces. Yeah, good, good um, honking paint. <laughs> I mean, you probably draw more geese in your life than I am. I, it might just be the emote. <laughs> it might then be we, it. Then we've drawn the same amount of geese. <laughs> and you painted it, you know? No, it's with uh, pastels. Pastel oh. Well, it's, it's kind of painting. Solid painting. <laughs> Gum, gummy. <laughs> it's physical. I call it painting. <laughs> Doesn't need to be paint involved for a painting. Anyway, thank you for coming along and some, in some cases, joining. Um, Yay. Yeah, Stream turn. successfully hijacked. <laughs> Yay! Well, we, we talked about this happening. I, I had no idea how long the game was, but I knew that if we finished early, we might as well do this. So. I knew there well, wasn't much left, but also uh, knowing this game, I would have no idea how long that would that part in the walkthrough would have taken. I, I mean, let's face it, that final boss took way too long. Yes. <laughs> Despite the fact that I was doing everything right. <laughs> I would have absolutely guaranteed were, were somebody not telling me that I had to carry on, I would have stopped <laughs> and tried lots of other things. Yeah. I just kept looking at the walkthrough, like, really, is that it? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's it. Just you kept saying that. The walkthrough, keeps, the walkthrough says you're doing it right. <laughs> and I'm like, are you sure? Are you sure? I also didn't feel sure because it <laughs> went on for too long. So I was just like, this doesn't feel right. Yeah, it wasn't really great on giving uh, feedback in that particular moment. N no. I mean, again, mm -hmm. the. Yeah, you just kept doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it gave good feedback in like, oh, if you hit the stomach thing, it grabs the stomach and stops pulling you in, and then the big head comes out, and then you shoot the big head. That's fine. I I I kind of got that as I was going, but I would have assumed after the third time I'd done it that okay, there's something else I need to do. Yeah, like, uh, and it turns out no, I had to do that it long. Usually 47 has more, more stages than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that it? Did I just skip a second stage and just kept the health bar going down through it? There was supposed to be a transformation and I just That's sculled it. my way down through it. <laughs> it's know. a game. It's a game. It's a game that's done! Um, so yeah, yeah we've, we've written it and we can go in the credits. <laughs> yes, we can be I will edit the credit screen <laughs> so that we're in the <laughs> Oh, hey, King Vader. Um, so yes, uh, we'll be back. We will be back on Saturday with yeah. Dead Island. Uh, yes. The, the Jib and the Duck and Giro. Good Zamble times. Um, and speaking of rewriting things, uh, Via. We are continuing to take all the ideas that we have and put them together in a weird, a weird and interesting way. Um, with an actual plot. Oh, Jack. Um, so yeah, got that on Sunday. Then on Tuesday, we will be starting Hitman 2. Electric Boogaloo. That is um, a fact. Eggs. <laughs> Facts! Egg. Ah, for, for this is... And by Hitman 2, I mean the original Hitman 2, Silent Assassin. Not, yeah, not Hitman not Season Hitman 2. 2. Uh, Hitman Episode 2? Uh, it was just, it, I think it was just called Hitman 2 Silent Assassin, I think. Uh, oh, oh, no, Hitman Season 2 is the new one. Yeah. And Hitman's in all caps. It's very confusing. <laughs> Why couldn't they just make it the boss? I don't. Uh, the original Finnish alphabet didn't include the letter F. So it was just Inish, I guess. <laughs> oh, that's such a dumb joke, thank you. <laughs> 
You're welcome. <laughs> and that's how we end the stream with dumb jokes. So yes, thank you for coming along. Hope you have a lovely time, everybody. Uh, look after yourselves. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Gero. Hope you have a good time. Good night. Good night, Bye. everybody.